History is filled with moments of unnecessary spite, where individuals and groups have acted out of spite, causing harm to others. So we want to ask you, were any of these moments unjustified, or did the recipients get exactly what they deserved? al Basa's Grudge House Imagine if your dad left most of his property to your brother, and a legal technicality left you with just a tiny sliver of land. Well, if you're al Basa, payback is the way to go. While his brother was building a luxurious hotel with a view of the ocean, Al used his property to build a two-foot-wide building, basically a wall you could live in, to block the view of the ocean. The building itself was unnecessary, but it did exactly what Al wanted. Hurt his brother's property values. A black heart. Forget watching paint dry. These artists are arguing while it's still wet. In 2014, an artist named Sir Arnish Kapoor got exclusive access to a paint known as Vanta Black, or the blackest black. It feels like an unnecessary paint, but I guess this matters to some people. Due to copyright, Kapoor made it so that no other artist could use this special paint. In retaliation, Stuart Semple created a paint known as the Pinkest Pink, as well as an even blacker black paint, which he legally allowed everyone to use except for Kapoor. Is any of this necessary? Probably not. But we can't help but be amazed at how petty some artists can get. The Little Bridge Man the two towns of Bonn and Buell, Germany, were arguing over the construction of a bridge connecting their towns. Bonn was put in charge of funding the projects, and they made clear how they felt with a last-minute addition, a statue of a boy with his bum facing toward Buell. This spiteful act backfired, though, since the Brunkenmannchen, or the Little Bridge Man, became a mascot for Buell, appearing on postcards and merchandise, and had a replica made when the old bridge was destroyed. Adolf and Rudolf Dassler Two major shoe brands were formed out of unnecessary mutual spite of two brothers. Adolf and Rudolf Dassler found success when gold medal winners from the 1936 Berlin Olympics wore their shoes. But creative differences led to arguments that broke the company into two new companies, Puma and Adidas. The brothers never spoke again, and for an extra unnecessary kick in the pants, forbade their employees from wearing shoes from the other brand. A Merry Naughty Christmas Bill Ansell was a local celebrity in the Ross Township of Pennsylvania, famous for the dazzling Christmas displays on his house. But the neighbors often complained about the incoming traffic that came as a result. So by the 2010s, Bill changed the theme of his decorations to spite. He had a urinating Santa, a snowman getting run over, choir heads stuck on spikes, and the words F Ross Township in lights. His house is now more popular than ever, drawing even more attention that his neighbors despise. Prince's Revenge Name The singer Prince Rogers Nelson was fed up with his contract with Warner Bros. after they made the unnecessary decision to release his song as quickly as he wanted. To get back at them, the singer changed his name into an unpronounceable symbol to make it impossible for the company to advertise him. When his contract expired in 2000, he changed his name back to Prince. Hess's Angry Triangle Sometimes a 27 by 25 inch triangle is enough to show the city that they can't do whatever they please. Manhattan was in the process of collecting properties to extend 7th Avenue, which caused many landlords to lose their properties. Frank Hess managed to buy an unnecessary plot of land, barely big enough for a gumball machine where he placed a triangle that read Property of the Hess Estate, which has never been dedicated for public purposes. Although he eventually sold the land to the city, he managed to get in the way of their construction long enough to make his point. Lamborghini and Ferrari Ferruccio Lamborghini was a tractor maker in the 1960s, who owned a Ferrari car. But when the clutch didn't work, his complaints drew the attention of Enzo Ferrari, who said Lamborghini didn't know cars and should stick to tractors. These unnecessary comments enraged Lamborghini, but what's a humble tractor maker to do except hire five ex-Ferrari employees to create his own luxury car brand that outsold the Ferrari? This sparked a decades-long rivalry between the two Italian cars that has helped both manufacturers produce the highest quality cars they can. Ford and Ferrari 
Enzo Ferrari knew how to make enemies. Ferrari and Henry Ford II made an agreement where Ford would buy 90% of Ferrari. The deal was going great, until Enzo Ferrari pulled out at the last minute. Ford was so offended that he ordered his best engineers to create a car that would beat the Ferrari in a race, and by 1966, they did just that. Redneck Stonehenge Rhett Davis was just trying to live his best life on his farm in Utah, when his new neighbors complained about his place being too country. He offered to put up a fence between their properties if they paid for half, which the neighbors unnecessarily refused since it would ruin the view from their home. Rhett jumped at the opportunity to make his own fence, burying scrap cars so they faced straight up. The moral here is to let country folk live in peace. What do you think? Were any of these spiteful moments unnecessary, or were there any moments that felt more like sweet, sweet revenge? Let us know down in the comments. Until then, stay curious and never stop looking for crazy ideas.